What is your promise? Why are you in business? How do you expect to grow? This is The Hook, a show focused on branding, marketing, and business development. You brand to inspire, not to sell. Jason Arsmont, the marketing maverick, gives expertise to business owners, serial entrepreneurs, and anyone interested in building a stronger company brand. Creating a brand is like telling a story. You've got one shot to say it all. When your marketing works, you've got them on the hook. A little bit of a layoff with some reruns, but we are back and better than ever, right? That's it. This is The Hook with the marketing maverick. That's Jason Arsmont. Look like you're rested and recovered, brother. I'm tan, man. You are tan. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to say reruns. It's best of, man. We've got like uh, yeah, 20 yeah. something shows. You I know? agree. We uh, had Todd on last weekend, Todd and all. And then, uh, yeah, it was Todd two weekends ago. And oh, okay. then last weekend, gosh, uh, it was, I think it was the, the rerun of. I wasn't uh, here. Don't the, look at me. The, well, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't really matter because we're back in studio with uh, fresh content, we'll say. That's right. We always talk about having fresh content. You got to keep it fresh. So that's what we're doing. And this segment brought to you by Brightbox Brand Marketing, where I work each and every day. Just got well most of the day. I mean, like if if I go into work, nice. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I do go into work. I'm not saying I go into the office every day, but I go I go to work every day. Like yesterday, we had a, a brand analysis that we did. I never stepped one foot in the office, but well, okay, I was working. That's fair. That's fair. Right? That is fair. I'll, I'll give you that. You do work. I'll get you a shirt. That says do work. Do work. Yeah. But Brightbox is your full service brand marketing firm. You get all of your uh, marketing needs there from marketing strategy, building out marketing calendars, graphic design, web design, video production, public relations, content writing. I mean, you name it. We've got you covered, and that's who's sponsoring this segment. So we thank you so much. And by you, I mean me. I thank me for sponsoring this segment. Yes. Can we also talk about this, too? If you go to if you go to hookradio.com, of course, you find Brightbox Brand Marketing on there. But we, we have an opportunity for uh, a graphic designer. So We do. We're looking for a mid- Level to senior level graphic designer. I think we got two or three positions open actually. So go to thehookradio.com. You can email through there or go to brightboxonline.com and email through there if you know anybody. Yeah, please do. Or if it's you, throw so, your name in the hat. Absolutely. We're, that's how we're doing it. We're just going to stir it up and we're picking a name. So no, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you got me on board. Well, that's pretty close, actually, and, man. You, we got down you, to the bottom of the hat, man. You, there wasn't a lot of names left. You haven't been able to shake me since. <laughs> Well, we got a good show today, man. We've got um, Billy Hank with Cryo Recovery. I am so excited about this because I'm way into this. I've been hearing really? a lot okay. about Yeah, I heard a lot about this on uh, the Joe Rogan podcast. I listen to Joe Rogan Oh, podcast. he's really into this, yeah. He's way into it, too. So I'm interested to see how they do this. Yeah. Um, is it just, is it like the neck down or is it, because I, I, I want to do it. I really want to go in because, you know, I'm a workout fiend. Yeah, you are. You are. Well, actually, you are. You work out quite a bit. I do work out. I, yeah. don't, I don't lose weight, but I work out quite a bit. And so uh, <laughs> he does it for the chicks. It's, it's supposed to be it's really, not for weight loss. It's just for the chicks. Yeah, it, it's an all men's boot camp. But yeah, I do it for the chicks. <laughs> all right. Well, nice. I don't know how that uh, is going to get me anywhere in life. Well, but. you know, and we'll go into more about what cryo recovery because I'm sure some of you guys are going, "What in the world is that? Why is Joe Rogan involved? In that? What is well, he he's, doing?" He's not really involved in what we're talking about today. No, but, no, he's not. At all, but um, I guess we're name dropping now. We're sponsored by the Joe Rogan <laughs> podcast, and he doesn't even know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll get into that later on. But know that Billy has launched uh, this company into what I call, or what anybody calls, emerging an emerging market. And um, for those of you who don't know it, it, that means it's a market that didn't exist or you know is just starting to come around whenever you launched your company. And so he's done that, and he's created a category, and now he's having to educate the market about the service and what it is that they're offering and. You know, I'm just, when it comes to business and starting businesses, I'm just always impressed with business owners with this type of confidence and conviction. You know, I mean, believing in your idea, doing your homework, and launching your vision is, I mean, that's it. I mean, that's it for me. That's where, you know, doing something that's been done a million times before is one thing, but when you're launching in, in this emerging market, it's just completely different. Um, I think the the brand analysis that you were talking about, we met with a new client um, over at the Ivy Lofts. These are micro condos. I don't know if you... If, Actually, you weren't there. This isn't your client I'm nope, talking about. This but isn't... Um, fascinating, fascinating concept. So they're doing a high-rise uh, residential condo development, but they're micro condos. Hmm. So they're like 300 to 500 square feet. 
Wow. And that might sound kind of crazy, but you've got to go check this place out. If you go to the ivylofts.com, you can see their website, see the floor plans. They do all this cool, like, modular furniture, like sofa bed into a bed into a desk conversion sets and stuff. I mean, it's, it's really neat. It's the way things are going, though. I watch... <sighs> I don't know if oh, I'm, they got tiny house stuff. I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm proud to talk about this or, or admit this, but I'm I'm into that tiny house. Mm. It's three to six, maybe seven hundred square foot houses that are that they're just yeah. really really small, and and a lot of them are, are portable. You can tow them wherever you need to take them. It's really cool though. Yeah. Well, what that's you can what do they're with doing. A small with amount yeah. of space. Yeah. Well, that's what they're doing here in Houston. It's the first one in Houston. I think the first one in Texas um, of this size. There's 550 units. Um, yeah, if that if that's something you're into, it's right on East Downtown in Edo. Um, it's a really cool up and coming location. You gotta go check them out. The IvyLofts.com. And yeah, so I guess and we just learned that Josh doesn't control the remote control in his house. I do. I you do. Put it on and this that. is this is your choice. Okay, well yeah, that's cool. I did. No, it's, it's I like that. That's good. Um, and I watch those people from Waco. Uh, oh yeah, the design, the yeah, house design, Joanna and something. T- I, I don't remember, but yeah, that I one does that. it for me too. I I, I kind of like that one. Yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah, I like anything where they tear it apart and they build it back up. I like doing that with companies, but houses are cool too. Yeah, yeah. Well, these emerging markets are, you know, I, I guess it's kind of a theme for today. You know, and I, you know, if you're listening to this show. Odds are you probably fall in a couple different categories. Maybe one, you're a business owner. Um, you know, two, you're you're someone responsible for sales, marketing, or growth of the company that you work for. Um, or maybe three, you're a entrepreneur, meaning you'd like to own your own business or start your own business, but you just kind of want to be an entrepreneur right now, and you haven't really taken that plunge. And you know, I guess the best thing I can do for 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 you guys is, to, you know, if you're in one of these three categories. Especially if you're the business owner who's fallen kind of flat, you've plateaued out, you've owned your business for a few years, sales were good at the beginning, and now you just kind of plateaued, is kind of going back and remembering that there's one thing above all else uh, that will allow you to continue to succeed or to get initial success, um, to keep you producing success on a regular basis, whether you're selling, marketing, starting, launching, uh, you have to be very good at this one thing. Any idea? What do you think it is, Josh? Mm, I don't know. I have the notes in front of me. I can see it. Don't, re- don't look at the notes. You're not supposed to be reading. Normally, you don't read. I, it, <laughs> I'm from Louisiana. <laughs> I'm from Louisiana. Well, that one thing is action. You know, And I know it sounds simple, but so many people become paralyzed by doing something new, taking a risk, getting out there, uh, launching a new service, a new product line, a new business venture, uh, let alone an emerging market where there's nobody else in this space. Um, and so I always you know, tip my hat to guys like Billy and, and Jack over at Ivory Loft um, for, for entering into these market spaces where there's no other models to, to mimic or to emulate. Um, you know, and so many people just they fall short of taking this action out of fear or complacency. Um, either they sit on their dreams and ideas forever, and never launching their company. Uh, they don't properly or confidently propose their marketing or sales plan to the ownership, which a lot of employees don't do. You know, they don't take action because they haven't been given permission because they haven't taken the action to put the plan together intelligently enough to go ask for what it is that they're wanting to do. I see so many marketing plans fall flat because the marketing director within the company doesn't put together a comprehensive marketing plan with expectations. I think people are scared, though. I mean, I, I talked about this just a few weeks ago, where if I if I wanted to start my own company, I wouldn't even know where to start. So it, it would just take the action of me figuring it out, talking to people that have started their own business, and where do I go from there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and if you're looking and you're not sure where to start, I mean, you know, it's you can always do what people say, start with your passion and see if you can't find a roadmap to financial success in your passion. I would venture to say... Nine times out of ten, you won't be that lucky um, to find something to find something that you really like and also be able to make money doing it. That it's tough to do, man. When your emotions get in the way, um, but the worst thing you can do is not take any action at all. And there's those people that always expect to run into the right person, right? Right. Instead well, of doing it on their own, they well, I'm going to find that person that will just kind of help me follow through with this. Yeah, and that's the I'll wait till my dream comes to me. Yes, uh, and, and I'm obviously not a fan of that. But you know, I'm telling you guys, thehookradio.com. You, you know, if you find yourself in this position, just struggling to take action, fug, struggling to find the next step, you know, I encourage you to go to the website and shoot me an email. I mean, I'm I'm 
I'm accessible, folks. I haven't reached the, the epitome of success here <laughs> yet in fame. You know, so I, I want you guys to be able to lean on me. I want this show to be interactive. I want to answer more questions and bring more guests on that are maybe struggling with starting a company or struggling with the first few months after they've started. And so that's what this show is all about. You know, I've been fortunate enough to launch several companies and do fairly well on most of them. And some I haven't, and I've learned a lot. So I, I'd love to be able to help you guys. I want you to go to the go to the website, shoot me an email, and I'd love to help you out. His name is Jason Arsmont, the marketing maverick. Thehookradio.com is the website. We'll be right back with the business tip after this. Marketing Maverick, that's Jason Arsmont right across from me. Right My here. name is Josh, and I'm not the Marketing Maverick. I just work with the guy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is being brought to you by OntoVikesTraining.com for all your training needs. What are some of the things that you guys do trainings on? Oh, man. We've... Um, we. Recently, we've done a lot of workflow uh, consultations coming in and taking clients through uh, exercises to help identify you know, the best workflow process for the organization uh sales training we've got uh we've partnered with russell granger who's been on the show in the past yeah. for the seven triggers mm -hmm. um so now we do that uh incorporate that into our sales training as well <clears throat> we've done corporate culture um leadership training i mean you name it we've just done all kinds of things and i guess really what ontobox stemmed from was being on the bright box side of things and doing more business consulting and just hearing where there was a need and going out and finding the best of the best practices and bring them all together and offering them up to help get companies moving, shaking. Yeah, cuz I think a lot money. of times that especially with a workflow uh, process, you kind of get stuck where you don't know if your processes are working or how you can refine them and make them better. Yeah, what typically happens is you develop an emotional relationship with either the people that are there or um, kind of their existing roles and responsibility. And you can't look at it objectively and say, well, you know what, that person in that role doing that many different things isn't best. What could be best is breaking that up into four different steps across two different departments. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, but um, that's probably the, the biggest workflow issue I see. Or if the one person that really created that workflow leaves the company. Well, yeah. Then yeah. you feel like, ooh, I, I, I don't know where we stand. I don't where are these invoices coming from? I mean, do we do the work? Do we not do the work? You don't know. Yeah. So you kind of have to create those checks and balances to go along with it. So, yeah. so on, if you're having some operational inefficiencies, mm -hmm. give me a holler. On to boxtraining.com. Right yeah. now it's time for the business tip. Business tip. We're talking about taking action, right? And I know, you, you know, even yourself, Josh, you said, well, you know, sometimes I just don't know where to start. You know, what does that action mean? And I think being that it's so important, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this in past shows, but I wanted to boil it down into kind of three main areas of taking action. You know, when I ran across Texas and did 30 marathons in 30 days, it was based on these three principles. Uh, the, the nine or so companies that I've started over the past eight years all started on these three principles. Um, these are, are things that if you do them, there's a lot of work behind each one of them, but if you do them, you're going to find yourself uh, more, you know, uh, closer to being set up for success, mm -hmm. at least being able to get your thing going. Uh, and that very first one, for uh, the first tip for action is declare. Oh, and I should say, these are the three D's, right? I noticed uh, Alan West, when he came on the show, he had these fancy acronyms and okay. names. So, Are you trying to be like him? I wouldn't say I'm trying to be like him, but I, he did a very good job. Of course. You can go to the Hook Radio podcast and <laughs> the check it out. <laughs> yeah. Yes, look through the archives of the podcast. Yeah. But the very first step in taking action and getting closer to success or, to, you know, getting something done is declaring what it is that you want to do. You know, I mean, I know accountability is one of the major keys to getting things done. And for some of us, uh, we're fine being accountable to ourselves, right? But the rest of us, you know, a little peer pressure, a little uh, being accountable to someone else, whether it be family or friends or coworkers, that makes all the difference in the world. So many times we lock up the things that we want to do uh, in our lives and in our businesses, and we kind of lock it up inside of us, and we don't tell anybody. Usually it's out of fear of failure. You know, we don't want to sound stupid um, and say, oh, you know, I'm going to start my own company, and then you don't, you don't do anything after that, and then people are calling you out. But that's really what you need. If you're not somebody who can be accountable, you're going to have a hard time with this, this checklist. <laughs> you know, I actually had this on a much smaller scale. I wanted to start a podcast 
Okay. Um, it, it's I, I think that you probably checked it out before. Uh, it's dad life. It's yeah, two, yeah. Two no, dads. I mean I remember you saying like a year ago. You were like, I'm thinking about doing. It. I'm like, come on, man, that's yep. good. You it know? was it was a year, a year and a half ago. And I said I, I want to do this podcast about being a dad and what it takes to be a dad, a husband. And the everyday trials and tribulations, and it took a long time, and I I couldn't do it by myself. I knew that because I, I needed some help and, and to find the right person, which was a friend of mine, Adam Smasher. Oh, who's name also, drop. Yeah, Whoa, yeah. name drop. Not really a name drop, but <laughs> he's got all the equipment, and okay. we, we actually work very well together because we've worked together for many years from our, our you know lives at another radio station. So us doing the show together is kind of perfect because we both have two boys. We have wives that don't like us. It, it's, it's, you know, it's a perfect situation. <laughs> nice. So we yeah. created that two dads, one mic because yeah. we have one microphone to speak into. And so it, it it really just took talking to to Adam about it. Hey, how are we going to do this? What are we going to do? You know, who's going to set this up? And so yeah. just following through with that. But I had to say, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to accomplish. Yeah, declaring that, letting people know. Yeah. I always say, shout it from the rooftop because you never know who's going to hear that's going to be able to help you get to the next step, right? And that next step is define, right? So we got declare it, then define it. Um, this is define what success looks like. Define what that podcast looks like. Define what uh, you need to do in order to get the thing rolling. It could be a financial, it could be a pro forma. Um, you know, for you, it could be getting the right kind of gear and the subject and you know all the expertise. Um, but define what it's going to look like so that you know when the opportunity comes, and then you'll know what that next step needs to be. Right. I think what's also important in defining is define what failure looks like and decide ahead of time how you'll respond to these things because mm -hmm. they're going to happen. And I think far too many times people don't define what I call your quit. Um, you know, when I was running across Texas, I defined my quit as being hauled away in an ambulance. So when on day five, I, I rolled my ankle and it swole up like a grapefruit, nobody on my team was looking at me saying, hey, we can quit. Nobody was saying, hey, are you sure you can make it? Because there was no ambulance in sight. I wasn't being hauled away. And uh, so the next morning they towed me up to the line and gave me a little push on my back and I had to do another marathon. And you also weren't telling us about it here back at home <laughs> because I remember being on the phone with you that day whenever you rolled your ankle yeah. and I said, how are things going? And you're like, eh, it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> but you didn't say you didn't say that you actually got injured from well, everything. You know, I. And you had no quit. You you defined it as something yeah. else. So you didn't want anybody to let anybody else on that could persuade persuade you into stopping what you were doing. That's right. That's right. And I think defining your quit, especially when it comes to business, what is it going to be? Is it going to be that second, third mortgage? What is it going to be that makes you stop pursuing this endeavor? What, you know, what is it going to be if you're looking to get a promotion within your company? Is it one no? Is it one review that didn't go the way you wanted? You know, what are the things that you're going to do to continue to fight against objections? Uh, defining those things ahead of time so that then when they happen, you don't have to waste emotional energy and stress uh, trying to contemplate whether or not this is the time that you quit. No, define it ahead of time so you can stay focused on the prize and stay focused on getting it done. And don't let people know when things didn't go as planned because a lot of times it's easier for them to talk you out of it. Yeah. Because because they're just negative people that they want to say, well, you know, it's not going to work. Or, you gave it a good shot. Yeah. yeah. Or they care about your well being. You know. And I knew that's what it was about my ankle. If I told my wife at the time, you know, I hadn't seen her in, in so long. If I told her that I rolled my ankle, it was the size of grapefruit and it was all veiny and it was messed up, she'd be like, "There's no way you're going to." Stop! You you got to stop doing this run. There's no way. So you know sometimes I keep I keep some of that stuff to myself because I've already defined what it is. Um, you know, then the, in the last D, you know, we got declare, define. The last one is deploy. You've got to deploy. Once you declare it, you define it. You know exactly what it's going to take. You've looked for the opportunities. You've outlined it well. It's about taking step and doing it. Um, start small if you can. You know if you can't then don't. But try to start small. Prove the concept, right? I know, Josh, with your podcast, you guys went ahead and just recorded one, right? It wasn't like there was a huge out-of-pocket, but rather than just committing to a 12-month calendar and having to write the editorial calendar for the whole thing and coming up with all the topics, you're like, you know what? Let's just get in here and get started. We recorded, and then the second the second one, I think that's when we did video, and people like video, and so we just keep adding little things to it, and, and yeah, it's just it's just doing it. Yeah. Actually yeah. going out and doing it. And and you're a little bit, uh, I guess, afraid for the first show. It's like, is this going to be the way we want it? Well, you got to work those things out. Yeah. But you got to go for it. Yeah, go for it and start small. But I don't, by starting small, I don't mean do it halfway. Yes. You know, I mean, still get your stuff together. Do it 
to the extent that you can, uh, but don't put off doing it waiting for something else to be perfect. It's kind of like kids, right? Mm -hmm. It's never going to be the perfect time to have a kid. Well, it's never going to be the perfect time to deploy something crazy, radical, new, successful business, whatever it is. Hey, it's just like this show. Whenever we talked about doing this show, we kind of sat on it for a while. And, and a few months later, I said, hey, let's get in the studio and let's start doing some warm up shows. And after yeah. we did that, that's whenever we started putting the gears in motion. Yeah. OK, well, then how is this going to work? Is it going to go exactly how we plan? Probably not. We worked out those kinks and now you have this great this fantastic great free resource well run show i mean it's just a beautiful show if i do say so myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> and all the content too we had someone tell us this past week that it, it's always nice to hear fresh content things that they haven't thought of and 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 they the person even said well i went out and bought the book that you guys were talking about which is russell's book that's right because I had to write it down. I couldn't listen to the whole show, but what I did was I went back and listened to the podcast, yeah. which is on thehookradio.com, listened to the podcast, got the information, ordered the book that day, because you can't ever learn too much. But don't miss these full shows, because we do giveaways. We've got one coming up today oh, in the next really? couple segments. I don't know if it's the next one or, or the, probably the fourth segment. Okay. Uh, Billy's got a little something he's going to give away. All right, cool. Well, we got Billy Hank, owner of Cryo Recovery, coming in next on The Hook. This is The Hook, a marketing, branding, business radio show that we have right here on KPRC 950, along with the Marketing Maverick. That's Jason Arsmott. Great guest in today. I have so many questions. So yeah. many questions about this. I'm it's very a good excited. One. Yeah, this is really cool. I know Josh and I are both, uh, you know, active people. We work out on a regular basis. And, um, well, let's just jump to it. So our owner, our guest today is the owner operator of a brand new cryogenic therapy studio. Um, his name is Billy Hanks. And his center is called Cryo Recovery. So, do you go by Bill or Billy? Bill, I go by Bill. Bill, Hanks. okay. So, yeah. yeah when we well. talked about this a little bit a while ago, uh, Bill was looking at me. He's like, "Yeah, it's like for recovery when you work out." You know, I don't know. It, I, I might not look look like a workout person. I don't know. So, <laughs> <Josh>. <laughs> I'm not the kind of guy you would think. Ah, oh, yeah, he works out every day. <laughs> I don't, but I work out every once in a while. But he goes hard. Hey, it doesn't matter how much you work out. It's just a matter of recovering, whether you're working out. But um, the cold shock from the cryo has a lot of benefits, Not even, even if you aren't just doing workouts or anything like yeah. that. You have other benefits that help you have, be energized, help you feel better, be focused, and we can talk about those here. Yeah. Minute, yeah. So. Well, so let's back up just a little bit. For our listeners who don't know what cryo is, when we say cryo recovery, that's the name of this, the center. But maybe give us a little intro into what cryo is and how how that's helping people and what it's doing right well cryotherapy has come on the scene here recently probably within the last four to five years really starting to pick up a lot of steam and what people are doing is finding out that there's good cold therapy out there and in the right doses it helps you a lot right so um, you know, too much cold, you know, you get into those areas of frostbite, things like that. But when you're shocking your body and you're giving yourself a cold shock, it's very helpful to your body. And so what cryotherapy does, it's, it's a, um, cold air chamber. And, um, what people do is they go and get exposed to the cold for a matter of anywhere from two to three minutes. Well, the cold air is anywhere between minus 150 Fahrenheit to 200 Fahrenheit. And that um, has an extreme effect to your body. It causes your blood vessels on the outside of your body to vasoconstrict. And then what that does is send your blood inward. You get like this big spike of what they call norepinephrine, which is an huh. endorphin that releases a lot of good hormones. And then all that has a trigger effect of fighting inflammation, helping you recover faster. Um, people with um, chronic me medical conditions, it actually helps them control their inflammation, especially with like people that have oh anything from fibromyalgia, um, arthritis. Um, I mean, it even helps with some skin skin conditions too. So there's a lot of good benefits from it, but it's basically cold exposure for about two to three minutes. Um, the good thing about this this that now that's coming on the scene it, it is only two to three minutes i mean the, the longest part oh, of doing yeah. this is you know getting changed and getting exposure to it so typically when you do it you go in with as much skin exposure as possible that's safe 
Uh, most people have something on their feet, something on their hands, and then they go into the chamber for that short period of time. They get that vasoconstriction, and then you know that has all the effects. Wow. And so where's the studio at? The, the studio th that we have, or the, um, the center, is in Vintage Park, um, which is 249 in Luetta. So we're okay. on the north end of Houston. Um, we we uh, just opened back in January, the end of January. So we're roughly three and a half months old. Wow. And we're just kind of getting started. But we're picking up a lot of steam. People are starting to see the benefits of it. We've had some uh, Texans in there and some nice. other basketball players. So, so um, there's so there's, Vintage Park of 249 in Luetta. Is there a phone number or a website that you want to give give out? Yeah, yeah. So website is um, Cryo Recovery Houston. That's the easiest one to remember. dot com. Um, the other one is Cryo RCV. It's, it goes to the same place, just two different okay. domains. So okay, mm -hmm. Cryo Recovery Houston.com. Go check that out. Uh, I know for me, I hadn't really seen this. You know, I've been in and around the endurance uh, scene for some time and had heard about it, but I hadn't had a chance to to really check it out. So you can go to the website, but really, I encourage you guys to come by the the center and and, and see it firsthand. Yeah, definitely come by the center. Um, we we uh, have packages available. Typically, what we like people to do is um, get get associated where they're coming in for a week or so, just to kind of get the full benefits. Okay. One time is going to give you a, a, it's going to make you feel better that day. But if you're really trying to change your state or really trying to fight uh. some information inflammation, you're going to want to come several times in a week. So okay. we have different packages for that. Um, I think we're gonna we're gonna do a little one. discount for yeah. our listeners. <laughs> All right, obviously we like we like the hook. So um, so yeah, um, come out and check us out right now. Um, we're we're doing a seventy nine dollar a week trial. So you can come in and do it for seventy nine dollars. Try it out for a week, awesome. which is just an awesome deal because we want people to do the full week to see the full benefit. Absolutely. So, so either go in, tell them you heard it on the radio show, and they'll give you a hook up on the price. Or you could probably go to thehookradio.com, too, if uh, if you don't remember all of that, and shoot me an email, and I'll get you in touch with Bill that way, too. But uh, it's up on the north side, Luetta in 249. You know, it, it, what it, the reason I heard about Cryo in the first place, because and we talked about this earlier, Joe Rogan's podcast, because he talked about doing it, but also Ian McCall is an MMA fighter, and his daughter has, uh, I, I don't know if it's some kind of arthritic condition, um, where she was in pain every day whenever she woke up and, and, and really hurting. And he brought her to cryo, I, th I believe, when she was two or something huh. like that, whenever wow. she was really young. And it's wow. really helped her improve her life because it's helped the inflammation go away from that. I need to find out exactly. I was looking through here to find out exactly what uh, what she had. Yeah, that's that sounds similar to some of the stories we've already heard. I mean... Um, we have a couple of our clients, they have the, the same issue, any kind of autoimmune disease. Um, they're not mm -hmm. that young, but um, we have one who is, um, has been through all the treatments, the medical treatments, and, and um, she's been through all the pain pills and, and all that, and she's actually developed a lot of ulcers, so she can't take pain pills anymore. Wow. So she um, has incorporated uh cryo cryotherapy into her daily life and she's able to function now she's able to get out of bed go do things um whereas before i mean it was just chronic pain all See, the that's time that's amazing so. and it's such a short amount of time you know it's not like this is an hour and a half long therapy session or something like that and i guess i mean the way that i've read it and correct me if i'm wrong bill but it's almost like you know if you're facing uh some type of chronic pain and you're looking to have surgery i would just recommend go try this first yeah, you, you definitely want to try it. Um, there are some things you have to look out for. I mean, I'll obviously, always can, um, talk to your physician before you go try it out, sure, you sure. Know, especially. Yeah, I'm not know, giving somebody, medical advice here. I'm yeah, just saying. exactly. <laughs> and, but I will say that, though, I mean, this is a good preventative um, ability that really has no negative side effects. I mean, it's cold. I mean, everybody, that's what they say. Oh, it's cold. Well, yeah, it's going to be that's cold. That's the one side but, effect. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's two to three minutes, and, you know, we we talk about people taking ice baths and all that, and people do that. It's not even close to that painful. I mean, on a scale of one to ten, you know, ice, ice bath being a ten, this would be like a three or a four compared to an ice oh, bath. Oh wow! You know, I think so. a lot of people think though you go in there and it's full, like it's not over your head. 
No, your head's exposed, so you're okay. you're breathing regular air. You know you're, what you're doing is just getting all your body exposed to the cold, but your head stays up above it. They do have the different ones, the walk-in chambers, but um, I, I don't think there's any here in Houston. They've got some in hmm. some places out in California and stuff, but yeah, I can. I mean, you know, I used to do so many, you know, those ice baths, and they're just mm. horrible, man. But then you got to go get the ice. I mean, by the time exactly. I, I mean, I could have just paid for. You know, a weekly uh, <laughs> membership and, man, got it done a lot that, quicker, been more effective, didn't yeah, have to worry exactly. about the... <laughs> yeah, and that's that's what it comes down to. I mean, yeah. you're, you're basically getting the same effect that you get with an ice bath and maybe even better because one thing that happens with the cryotherapy is your blood vessels vasoconstrict and then immediately you warm back up versus mm-hmm. an ice bath that's going to keep you cold. So some of that nutrient-dense blood that you create, oh, it yeah. takes a while to get back into that tissue where a cryotherapy session... Boom, you're out and you're you're feeling better and, and going on about your way. But you're right. I mean, going to the okay, I got to go to the gas station, get myself five bags of ice. I got to go take it home, put it in my tub. I've got to have it the right temperature. I mean, you're talking like a three hour ordeal, you know, to get in, <laughs> yeah. and then you're not even warmed yeah. up after that. So yeah, and you're, if you're doing it after a workout, you're already exhausted. Yeah, you know, I mean, when mm-hmm. I was doing you know Ironman training and stuff, it was like you're you're so dead when you get done yeah. with some of those workouts, and you're like just trying to pick up the bags of ice. You know, you're like, this exactly. is stupid, but yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like the the professional teams are coming to you for advice? I think the professional teams, I mean, it's it's new technology, but all the science is there. But there there comes a um, point where it just kind of becomes logistically hard to do, right? So ah. so you've got to have, you know, nitrogen tanks to be able to cool down the air. You've got to have people being able to manage these. So that's, that's why it works well for us because we make a business out of it. But, you know, whereas if you were just somebody who – did this once in a while, you know, you know, every evening or something like that. It would, it right. would take a lot of effort and, you know, a, a just take logistics to be able to make it happen and all that. And sometimes it just doesn't get there. And and uh, there are some crowd therapy units out, out there that aren't that good, too. So you have to make ah. sure you have a good one as well. You, know, okay. you need to be able to cool the person down, make sure they're getting that full effect of getting the norepinephrine release and you know, getting all the benefits from it. So, yeah. And I've got some questions around that in our next segment. I want to talk with you about um, just kind of the business side of this, but I, I do want to clarify. So I think for me, I, I hear recovery, I'm thinking specifically from workouts because that's how I've always used, you know, cold treatments. But is this also, are you seeing it for other things other than that? Cause I just, I don't want our yeah. listeners to think, well, I, I don't run every day, right. so I don't need. Well, you that's, know, that's one thing that we didn't we didn't want to segment ourselves to is just the athlete, right? And I think there's actually a bigger market out there for the, you know, standard people who have arthritic problems or just, yeah. you know, inflammation, right? So inflammation is pretty much the cause of everything, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we're seeing a lot of people like that. I would say that's probably even more of our um, huh, clientele is more of those, those type of people. There's also the people who come in for the um, – the skin and beauty side of it, because we haven't <laughs> talked about that, but um, cooling your skin down to that, you have a, a, a generation of collagen, right? And so that's going to help um, skin, you know, the, the parents of skims, remove blemishes. Um, you know, a lot of our, our women who do it, they've talked about the benefits for cellulite and varicose vein reduction. Wow. So, Interesting. So there's been some good benefits of, of that too, you know, but I mean, Athletes are, they've been kind of the linchpin for getting this going. They've been the ones who've, who've integrated into their routines. So that's kind of where it's all started. But yeah. I think it's like filtering over and going into the other markets that are out there. For Absolutely. Us. That's Bill Hank with Cryo Recovery. Do you feel like it helps trauma in any way? Well, what do you mean by trauma? I mean, a lot okay. of times we talk about recovery, overall yeah, recovery like from working ACL out. ACL repair. Yeah. Right, right. Well, so, I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the. I mean, inflammation, right? So the quicker you can reduce the inflammation and yeah, I guess get it all comes back down to that. And, and, and it's, it's going to help out with that. But um, from the trauma side of it, um, you know, we, we have other modalities that we do. And we, we have what we call Normatec compression that kind of helps uh, bring in nutrient dense blood to a particular area of the body that we, we do. And then we also have um, electrotherapy out there that um, does kind of the same thing. So we've got some other modalities that go along with the cryotherapy, Ah, but like what we'd like to do with cryo is like say, hey, let's get your blood right, let's get it nutrient dense, and then let's kind of focus on areas. So we've seen um, hamstrings heal, we've seen uh, sprained ankles uh, 
but that had been swelled for two, three weeks, being able to be, you know, in two days, be down to their normal size. So, wow. So it's, it's pretty incredible stuff. Um, there's, there's kind of the uh, belief that ice on everything is the right thing to do. Um, but, you know, actually, you know, where you take and do a systemic response and then draw blood into the area, then that seems to be doing really yeah. well with helping out injuries and all that. So That's awesome. Well, you guys got to check it out. CryoRecoveryHouston.com. All right. We're going to talk more about this at the business side of things yeah. coming up right after this. We'll be right back on the hook. What's amazing to me is we're talking about cryo and and things that are cold and it's steamy in this. Why this is that? What do they do to us on the weekend, man? No love, no uh, AC. Goodness. Should have brought one of those chambers over here. Yeah. Uh, you're listening to the hook. That's the marketing maverick, Jason Arsminer, guest in studio today with Cryo Recovery. Bill Hank hanging out with us. Uh, Answer some Bill questions. Hanks. Uh, Bill Hanks yeah. with an S. So take off the Y because we called you Billy earlier and yeah. add an S to the Hanks. Yeah, All right, cool. We got you now. Um, so we talked a lot about the functionality of, of what it takes for, for uh, the cryo recovery to for your body. But on the business side, I know Jason has a lot of th- things that he wants to, he has questions about. Yeah. yeah, I just love these types of businesses and emerging markets where there's not a formula. You know, I'd love just kind of give our listeners a little bit of background on how did you get involved in this? What was the final thing that made you take the plunge? Uh, well, there's a number of things. I think like no one thing is just like what made it happen. But, uh, you know, you obviously see a need, right? You see a need in the marketplace. Um, you see maybe, like I said, an emerging industry, something like that. And then... Um, some things happen in your personal life and then it's like, okay, it starts going together. Right. So nothing just, so you, you don't know, force it. Yeah. In other you, words, yeah. Yeah. You, you do, you do have to at some point, but I think like, you know, there's, there's, you know, kind of a buildup of a few things that happen and it's like, okay, now I got to take the jump. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's, that's kind of how we got into this. But, um, I guess from my standpoint, um, uh, you know, we, we, had been looking into this kind of industry, this cryotherapy and different things that you could do for, for inflammation with bodies and stuff like that. And, and, um, I had looked into it and, um, had found out about it and then started using it and uh, started to see results. And I was like, okay, this stuff really works. And then it's like, okay, well then how do I, there's a need for it in the market. So, and there's nothing local by me. So what do I need to do then? So what can I do? Well, so there was a need. I saw the need in the market. Um, obviously, there's there's a need for you know different kinds of health services for all kinds of people, and then um, you know some things on the on the personal life. Like I was saying, um, I was I was at a job and and um, they were getting ready to relocate up to Dallas, and so um, and of course I was in the oil and gas industry and you know how that is and I wasn't going to relocate up to Dallas so. Um, decided that I would stay in Houston, but if you're going to go nice. find a job in <laughs> oil and gas in Houston, you know, six, eight months ago, you weren't going to find too right, many, right? Yeah. So, is, is it because you didn't want to be around a bunch of Dallas Cowboy fans? <laughs> that is, yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So you took a, took the plunge from being uh, from working at a large company to mm-hmm. just, hey, I'm going to go in on my own and go yeah, in my own yeah, vision. Yeah, exactly. I love so, it, man. That's so, awesome. So, um, so much comfort in having a job with a big company and just it's just like a a cush cush thing kind of like you know you don't have to worry where your paycheck's gonna come from that week you always know it's gonna you know be there you just show up and do your do your time and you know make sure you're contributing and you get paid for it but see but um, that's the key do your time man that's just (laughs) dreadful you know that's it sounds that's tough to do well, so so at one point you had to have said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start all the research and stuff, but I'm going to do this. So how long from the point when you said, hey, I'm going to do this to actually opening Getting up in January? Done. Okay, open in January. I would say it's about six to eight months, something wow. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's six fast, to, man. Yeah, so it you was were committed. fast. It okay. was, um, yeah, you got to just kind of like – Make it happen, you know, MIH. Yeah. <laughs> so you just got to go out there and find find the – do your research, right? And then, you know, find the resources and, 
you know, I, I was lucky enough to um, have some people that also believed in this and, and um, wanted to help me out. So, so I got a couple um, investors on board and, and they helped me with the uh, finance side of it. Uh, and then um, just kind of the rest of it, you know, just kind of put together yeah. on how we wanted to do it and how we wanted to address the market. And, yeah, you know. that's interesting. So you did get some initial investors to, to get going. So did you find those through? Because people always say, where do I look for investors? How do I find investors? And I'm always like, just tell everybody about what you're doing. And if it's a cool enough thing investors are going to find you. Is that that's kind of how exactly it happened for right. you? Exactly. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. how it went. I mean, you just <laughs> like, you have passion behind what you're saying. And that's what I was telling. There are two friends that I worked with, right? And, uh, you know, I told them about it and just, you know, this is, this is really neat. They see the passion and they see it and hear it in your voice, right? And so, so um, they, they obviously, you know, came forward and helped out with it and, and was able to provide some capital. But, you know, it, it, it just takes that. You just, people see, you know, some passion behind it. See if you have a plan. That's the other thing. I mean, I didn't go out and just say, hey, give me some money for this, right? I wrote a business plan, you know. You got to okay, have a okay. business plan, say, even though it's nothing like it I am today, I still had a plan. And, <laughs> right. you know, at least that, you, know, you just bit. don't, yeah. you know, go out and say, oh, I'm going to, you know, pick a location and go here and then right. just try, th try throwing money at it. You've got to have some kind of a plan. So we had the business plan and they believed in it and we went for it. So putting a business plan together, and, I, and this is something else that I get all the time from people that email and call in, uh, you know, it, I think a business plan or a business model is easy when there's other, there's similar companies out there doing it. I mean, yeah. for you, you're in an emerging market. So did you try to find somebody else down the road that had, had one of these kind of centers or did you just kind of make this, make it up as you went? Well, um, yeah. So I didn't talk to another place that has, has this location, but or, but there is a place, um, there, there's another cryotherapy place here in Houston, and, and all I did was took took their um, their their pricing and just said, okay, okay. Started so with that, started with their yeah. pricing and said, okay, this is what the market's willing to accept, right? So so this is what my revenue would be. And then from there, I just took, okay. Kind of reverse so, engineered yeah, it out. Yeah, and the cost would be this, um, employees will be this, insurance, you know, down to marketing, I can think I can spend this much. So I got to have this many members, you know, and you kind of put that together and, you know, target to get that, that, that revenue in there. And then from the, you know, the rest of it, it just kind of falls yeah. into place. Did you, so is this a, a market or industry that's regulated at all yet? Or have you guys run across well, that kind of a problem? Not really. I mean, um, they will say that like cryotherapy is not FDA approved, but neither is an ice bath, you know. So, right. <laughs> so really, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, take that, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, we there there isn't any okay. you know regulations on that. Um, you, you do have to you know take the utmost safety for your for your um clients, you know. So you really have to have good employees. You have to have good processes. You gotta. You know, make sure, you know, you talk to them about the hazards that are there. Um, if they have any, you know, conditions, make sure they're, you know, consulting with their doctor before they come and do mm -hmm. it. So, so yeah, you've just got to take those safety, yeah. you know, processes to make sure nothing. Yeah. Happens. You know, one of the things I'm always big about is when I see mom and pop so often, they, they don't do a good job of putting their brand together and the kind of brand experience from parking lot through the, you know, their, their, their business. And, you know, I mean, I, that's one thing I'll say to you, man, hats off. Like I was impressed from, you know, when I first saw your logo, when I pulled up to your location and went inside, I mean, it's very consistent and clean and looks like it could be part of a chain. I mean, how, how much thought went into that whole experience? Cause Pretty good job, man. Uh, so I had some help. Um, actually, okay. it was um, s some uh, a designer that helped me with that. I came up with the logo myself uh, through just a designer. And, you know, what you can do is you can get a logo. And then uh, I just sent it out to my friends and said, hey, vote on this. Let me know what yeah, you like you the go. best, <laughs> okay. you know, and then just kind of broke it down from yeah. there. And then, um, you know, then as far as the design on how you want it to lay out and what, it, what you want it to look like, you just got to, um, like I said, stay consistent with it. Um, I had, like I said, I had that designer kind of help me out a little bit. Yeah. So you got to bring in some consultants and some people know who, yeah. what they're talking about. Yeah. yeah so well, it definitely did a good job. You can tell there was intentional thought from as they walk in the door to how they get to the cryo chamber room to how you do some of the other ancillary services that you guys do. So I, I mean, definitely uh, well done. So are there plans for 
franchising or breaking out, or are you just going to own a couple more studios? What What do you have? What's next for you guys? Well, obviously you got to grow. You know, you can't just stay. <laughs> stagnant, like, Let's master stagnant, the first right? location. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we're three months into it. So okay, um, okay, three three and a half months into it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of other things that I want to do. It's, it's trying not to do too much too soon. You know, mm-hmm. at the same time. Um, but yeah, like you said, yeah, get this one underneath our belt and then go about growing it. I, I don't know if, fi- um, franchising is the way to go. Um, and, uh, we'll explore that a little yeah. bit more. I, I think there's just a lot of open doors. We just don't know which one we're going to go through yeah. yet. So, well, I know our listeners that are, are interested, our entrepreneur guys out there and gals or our business minded folks, you know, they always want me to ask or like, Hey, you always just talk about the highlight, the, the, the good things that are happening. Um, have, has there been any struggles or major major hurdles or anything that kind of was almost like, man, this just isn't going to happen, and you were able to kind of overcome? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> That's a I longer mean, list. You yeah. like, I mean, we're talking about the memberships, right? And you have this plan for memberships. Even though we've done good and we've we've overreached you know, what we planned, right? And we're, we're happy for that. But then you'll hit those those uh, few days that nothing happens, and you're just like, oh, nobody's crap. coming you know, in. Nobody's coming in. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be sitting on all this. Um, still got more to go. The bank accounts dwindling, all that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. So, um, yeah, there's definitely challenges with you know the cash flow aspect of it, and, sure. and making sure you're you're meeting all your targets. Um, and yes, yeah, so, I mean, I think everybody go, has those days, you know, and yeah. you just have to snap out of it and you have to recognize it and just go, okay, this is a, this is one of those things. And I just got to figure out what's my next step and, you know, what can I do to overcome where I'm at right now? And then, you know, maybe go on a radio show or something. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. It's a great way to get, get the word out. I've done a little research and, uh, into Uh-oh. if, if beer, drinking beer causes inflammation, and it doesn't like I thought it might. I was thinking that this could also be a go great get way hammered to... and then go do some cryo recovery. <laughs> I thought it would be the best thing oh, that we're going to make us talk about it. Stave off. <laughs> it would stave off having a, a the next day a being trashed. Day. Yeah. No. Ah. Uh, okay. So we have some people who do it for that. So. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I had no idea. I just kind of <laughs> looked it up on my own to see if it could help with a hangover. No. I. Uh, I think it, it does, it, and we have some people have come in for for that purpose. And um, if you think about it and the, what it does for your body, and it give, gives you that endorphin rush, and yeah, gives you a boost, especially if you're kind of just beat up for that day. So yeah, it it helps with that. And so the next day, <laughs> the next day, you know, just so. make sure you're not still hammered when you go in, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Well, we're talking to Bill Hanks with Cryo Recovery. You can go to cryorecoveryhouston.com to check them out. They're up on the north side. 249 in Luetta, kind of north side, yeah. Yeah. 249 in Luetta. Um, and go in and say, what's up? We heard you on the hook. They're going to give you a discount. You can't yep. beat that, man. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for coming in today. Really yeah, appreciate bet. it. Now, I, I love it because I've heard about this forever. I had my own questions. So mm-hmm. I was excited that you were coming in to see us. Definitely informative. And we you know, we want to keep in touch with you. So you know, let yeah. us know how it goes. I mean, I'd like to get a six and nine month update. Let us know if you're still crushing the numbers and we'll mm-hmm. be... Uh, Sending as much traffic there as we can, man. I'm sure Josh and I will be there to check it out ourselves. I will in the next week, as a matter of fact. It's time for me to go in. That boot camp's trashing me right now, man. <laughs> Get it, man. It's awesome. All right, that's Jason Arsma. He's the marketing maverick. We'll be back next week. You can always check us out on thehookradio.com.